Good evening, everybody. I'm Art Whitman, Chair of the Shaftesbury Select Board. I'd like to call this meeting of the Shaftesbury Select Board to order on Monday, May 15th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. First order of business, is there anything on the agenda that anybody has a conflict of interest in? No. 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 Uh, I have minutes from the special meeting of Hawks Avenue and, and uh, Grandview Street uh, where we talked about the sidewalk, uh, entertain a motion to accept them. Let's see who was, uh, I don't think Tony was here, is that right? Okay, everybody except Tony was here. I move to accept them. Naomi, motion by Naomi, second by Mike. Um, any, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Abstain. Abstain. So carried. Uh, three, three zero one. Next order of business, we have some warrants. Uh, we have a payroll warrant number 22 for $26,222.01. So moved. moved by Mike. Second. Second by Tony. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried, 4-0-0. We have uh, check warrant number 37 for a total of $24,614.22. So Move by Mike. Second. Second by Naomi. Items over $1,000. Bendington County Sheriff's $1,989. Uh, Cartographic Technologies, uh, this is for mapping, is it? Yes. Mm -hmm. $4,000. Uh, GA Bow Fuel for $1,468. Howard Fairfield Incorporated, $1,020. Uh, Innovative Surface Solutions, $3,048. Morse, uh, Morse Repair, $3,078.90. Nimrac, $1,472. CRS Consulting, $1,055. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried, 4 zero, zero. Any announcements? Does anybody have any announcements? Dave, do you have any announcements? No. Okay. Public comments? Is there anybody on Zoom? I do. Go ahead. Yes. Um, well, my comments pertain to the um, 
sidewalk study, so I can either speak now or wait until it Later. comes up on your agenda. Thank you. Yeah, it's on the agenda, so if you don't mind, we'll be plenty of discussion on it then, okay? Okay, happy to wait. <laughs> Anything else? Nope. These are all part of the EMS, I think, okay? Uh, so, Bill Kellerman, you're up with EMS, is, or Bennington Rescue is here to talk about the EMS week. When usually, bring a chair with you. That speaker is yours. Hello, everybody. Hello, Bill. Hi. Uh, well, thank you for uh, entertaining us for EMS Week. Um, we're celebrating the service of our EMTs and paramedics to the community, and this is our 60th year of service um, to the community since 1963. Um, so, uh, really want to celebrate the great work that our crew does, they do. um, keeping our community safe and responding to emergencies throughout the three towns that we serve um, and our neighbors whenever they need help, too. Um, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have about the service. I am. Uh, I know uh, many of you, but I am new to this role as being the executive director for just a few months now um, and uh, looking to get back involved with all of our communities a little bit more than we were, um, especially with COVID, um, since we've been uh, a little bit freer from that um, over the last few months. <laughs> Thank God. Yes. Yeah. How's your recruiting going? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Better than average. Um, we are probably about 80% of where we'd like to be on staff. Um, so we have 25 active employees right now. Most are full-time um, employees now. I think we have two part-time employees. Um, and uh, not <laughs> nobody really wants to volunteer and have to try and meet those requirements um, these days. It's a, 300 hours worth of training just to become an EMT, and then it's another um, 50 hours every two years of continuing education that you have to keep up on top of everything else that, that we do. So it's hard. It is, it is. And insurance is not keeping up with, uh, um, uh, compensation is not keeping up with inflation. So they just keep everything nice and level there uh, for the most part. Always a challenge. It always is. It always yeah. is. But, but you, our apprenticeship is working well. Say, Sammy's one of our apprentices. I was going to say you're apprenticing, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Hi. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Tammy, Tammy will go into our next advanced DMT class. Super. So um, that we like to keep that career pathway going for yeah. all of our folks and try and keep them in EMS. Um, it used to be a, a, a like a jumping block for other yeah. careers, um, but a lot of people are staying in now. Um, to, and we hope to keep them in um, by offering programs so that they can go to advanced EMT and then on to paramedic and critical care paramedic. Great. Great. We're in the process of trying to get as many grants as possible um, now. So we've filed for a large federal one. We've asked Senator Sanders for some discretionary um, funding as well. Um, and we're looking, um, we're looking at other grants as we go along, whether it's small or large. Um, every little bit helps. As long as it's worth more than the time put into it um, and, and we have an opportunity to get it, um, we, we love that. Um, and we're also supported very well by our communities. Um, uh, we just got a donation for $1,000 from Walmart to get bleeding kit control kits to hand out to the public um, that come for training. We have free training next week on the 25th of May. Uh, we'll teach people CPR, um, how to use Narcan and how to stop bleeding. Um, so we've got two sessions there on our website um, if anybody's interested. And then we'll have a little celebration for our staff um, and the 60th um, on Friday, May 26th at 2 p.m. Um, great way to start the holiday weekend a little bit early for anybody that's looking to skip out of work and come celebrate a good cause for uh, about an hour or so. Bill, can you send me um like a notice for that training next week? I'll Absolutely. put it up on our webpage, on the front yeah. page, so people will be able to come down if I see Absolutely. It. Okay, thanks. I'll send you that probably before I leave here. Okay. Good. <laughs> uh, Bill, do, do the grants, uh, 
can you get a grant just for general operating expenses or did or is it something specific most of the time it's something specific um, if it can be uh, applicable then sometimes so for example the the large federal grant we just requested um, would help support what it costs for us to pull staff in on overtime to educate okay. um, with the goal of increasing the amount of education we're providing um, to try and increase the ranks of not only us but our, our neighboring agencies everybody's everybody's hurting for people sure. right now whether they're volunteer or paid so um, half of the money in that grant would go towards covering the cost of folks on overtime to educate uh, and the rest would be equipment for education or for response to opioid um, emergencies and substance use disorder emergencies there's not anything good like um, on the police side there's safer grants and there's the assistance to firefighter grants there's no equivalent for emergency medical services interesting okay yeah so what can we do can we who do we push um, our state and federal uh, representatives um, there is a it was not put into this legislative session but uh, much like Maine has done Vermont was considering a blanket fund statewide to then distribute to EMS agencies to help try and offset some of the costs that the insurers are not keeping up with it's hard for every little town to contribute um, enough to support a full-time emergency medical service mm -hmm. um, but when you distribute that over at least a state or a large region um, it becomes a, a little bit more affordable and economical um, to help support the local agencies that are struggling right now the biggest struggle is keeping our budget as flat as possible and still increasing wages because we have to fight with McDonald's and Walmart sure. um, everybody's yep. wage is going up pretty quickly so we're trying to stay matched there um, so that we can keep our workforce and they're doing important work they Excellent. should be getting paid more than those oh, folks yeah. 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 yeah not that their work is, is any less important it's just <laughs> we're talking about lives and, yeah. and, and timely response so okay. anybody else comments or anything we really do appreciate it. in fact we uh, town of Shaftesbury several years ago took off from community appropriations and put it right into our budget so we that appreciate we, that yes so that we, uh, I was here with Forrest a few times um, yeah. during that yeah. and anytime you need any information um, we just had our audit statements out so we're going to send those out to our municipalities for the last fiscal year um, just to be clear and transparent um, and how we're how we're using all those funds. Okay. okay. Yeah. Anyway. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, thank you very thank much. You. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. You're welcome. And good luck. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's it. All okay. right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We are now have the treasurer's report. Melanie. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, could we start with the, the cash flow for April? Thank you. That's it. We didn't uh, tie a bow on April last time because the, the bank was not letting me uh, access any information. So I thought you could. Uh, oops. You know, I just have to get it onto the share screen so I can see it at home. Okay. What did you want the other one? No, this this is okay. good. Yeah. Um, so let's. I think we've already uh, we we did talk about all these things. So if we could just go down to the bottom, um, I'll show you the uh, the um, budget projection, which I was not able to do last time because the month had not been closed yet. So you can see that that's right where you want to be this time of year. I know I told you we're going to get a little bit more cash, which will not appear on the budget part. Uh, when the final reconciliation with the uh, school funding comes through. So that will give us a little more cash on hand, but that will not affect those budget numbers that you see there. Um, any, any additional revenues we'll get between now and the end of the fiscal year will be things like uh, clerk 
uh, revenue and uh, the, the uh, uh, transfer station. So it'll be just little uh, drips and drabs. We'll probably, it looks like we will end up at very slightly ahead of budget on revenues and uh, probably right on with expenditures too. You don't anticipate any? No, uh, it'll be very tight, but it'll come out about the same as it does every year, percent one way or the other. Yeah. We, it's usually a um, usually, remarkably accurate yeah, we're, we're usually pretty accurate. Yeah. So make if everybody we, stop spending money. If we can keep Mike in tow That's here. Right. <laughs> Mike's tires are all deflated. They can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we just, um, oh, if we can take a real quick look yep. at the, um, oh, unless anybody has any questions about the cash flow, we look at the reserve. Um, uh, you can see in the credits and debits there is one number there, and that is water. The water bills are out. Uh, if you expected one and haven't gotten it, give me a call because they they should have been received in your home by now. Um, so that's that's the only only thing that has happened so far in May is is that uh, water money coming in. Um, other than that, the only thing I wanted to mention is that we are uh, have already scheduled our external audit. Um, they're going to make their first trip here towards the end of June, so um, that's that's already happening. They like to, to have one session before the close of the fiscal year and then another one, the longer one, later on. So that's already on the schedule. Um, I think that's all I have. Is this this mid-month mid is not much to say. And you're, you're still hoping we don't have to borrow money? Yeah, I, as, as long as, um, the only question about that is always whether I can get the tax bills out. So yeah. uh, uh, I think is, um, especially with this, the reconciliation money, um, I, I think we'll be fine. Um, but, you know, I, it, it's, there are always question marks about the, the grand list. And the, and the big question mark will be as we get into July is uh, the delivery of a new truck. Because part of that is financed out of the equipment reserve fund in 24 so well I mean as long as it's we've got money in the reserve fund. yeah we're, we're 30, so that wasn't if wouldn't affect well, it's our 30, short we need 24 well okay yeah I, I would not really hope amount. we wouldn't get that close <laughs> <laughs> I like to keep a hundred thousand dollars around just uh, just in case so we'll talk okay <laughs> Mike can wait another four months we've been waiting two years for That's it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. anybody any questions all set Thank you very much, Melanie. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, a while back, it was brought to our attention, actually by um, Senator or Representative Durfee, that it's really hard to pull out Church Street with cars parked there. So we applied to the state. Within a few days, somebody came down and checked it out. And there is going to be a hearing in Barrie on the 23rd of this month. If uh, the property owner that is concerned about that this applies to has already been told um, yeah, what he, the situation yeah, we is. Notified him uh, a few weeks ago. He's aware of it, and we will be posting on the website. There is a, a uh, an online portion of this that you can join. They haven't sent me the invite yet, but we'll post that on the website if anyone wants to comment instead of driving to Berlin to. To comment on this, but it's it's uh, will be from the intersection of Church and Seven A on the uh, uh, northwest corner. It'll run back a hundred feet, which is approximately where that black mailbox is. Um, and anyone who's pulled up there in a car knows that you can't see anything when you look to the left the way they park in front of that building now. Um, yeah, it, it's a shame. I know some people here were losing parking, but that wouldn't be allowed parking anywhere else I've ever been. Not with all the trucks and the kids and the school crossing. It's just not. It's, it's a nightmare at 8 o'clock yeah. in the morning Yeah, here. it is. It is. <clears throat> yep. Okay. So that will go on the web page as soon as I get the invite, which should be this week because the meeting is next week. So anyone who wants to join can go to the web page and comment directly to the state. There's there's probably a, a probably a grace period before it goes into effect, but we would expect within a month or so there will be stripes out there. Yeah, I, I expect them to vote fairly quickly after next week on it, and then it'll just be up to the scheduling of the state crew when they can come down because they do the, all the marking. The so, state does the marking? Yeah, they're, they're, it's, they're in charge of all of it. So whenever they get a crew together to come down, that's when it will be done. Okay. 
Questions or anything? All set. Okay, we're up to the um, when we had the special meeting. Uh, we kind of decided that we would like to. There were, I guess, six different houses represented: three on Grandview and three on Hawks Avenue. We were just uncomfortable on making decisions based on just three and three. So we actually sent out a survey, and mm -hmm. we have the results back from that. So yeah, we'd like to talk about and that. And Naomi, now. I see your hand up. We'll be with you in just a second. Okay, so let's just bring Thank up you. the results here for a second. And let me go back to the screen so I can share this. So the overwhelming response, the one that sticks out the most is for Hawks Ave, we got an excellent response, 85% to the residents. And it is quite clear that sidewalks are not wanted on Hawks Avenue. Uh, we have eight no sidewalks to one, two people picked either side of the street and one had no preference. Uh, also for Hawks Ave, we had uh, of the 11 votes, uh, six wanted a speed table, five did not want a speed table. Uh, and just as a side note, I'm having Hawks uh, reevaluated by uh, the BCRC uh, speed test again to see exactly what we're looking at there and, and the volume of traffic there. Uh, so Hawks comes out, as, like I said, very much uh, a no to sidewalks. And comments I've received, people want us to look at a variety of other things, which is kind of the process. You know, uh, I explained to, to some who I spoke to that Hawks was included because the money that was out there looked for a way to combine sidewalks, the connectivity between communities. And this is just one of many routes that's available, but if sidewalks aren't a thing that Hawks wants, we'll move on to a, a different mm -hmm. approach. Uh, for Grandview, it was uh, completely opposite, where we had alternates picked and no preference, but everyone wanted a sidewalk and responded. The response was lower, only 11 out of 17 were uh, returned. Um, and they were very much in favor of the speed table also. So where we go with this is, this just gets sent to the engineer. This is part of the long evaluation process that's needed for federal dollars. Uh, this doesn't mean that anything is going to be done. The final recommendation will come back to the town and we'll evaluate what is actually useful to do while we consider many other alternatives to address the issues there which, um, you know, speed tables we are looking at already. Whether it's feasible for Grandview is kind of up in the air because of the slope. Uh, we have new arrangements with the sheriffs, so they will be out and we'll be studying the uh, speed again on Hawks and looking at alternatives. We've had suggestions for, uh, you know, turning it into a cul-de-sac, making it a one-way, uh, eliminating trucks from the street, there's a wide range of things that all have to be taken into consideration, but for this one project, uh, it was clear now that sidewalks are not an option that anyone on Hawks wants us to consider. Um, Mike, uh, 25 mile an hour speed sign, is it up for Grandview? And Hawks. And Hawks, so it's, it's now officially posted at yes. 25, so, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Naomi has her hand up, so. Yes. Yep, go ahead, Naomi. Naomi, you're muted. It's All right, we'll try again. Okay, thank um, you. Am I good? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay, great. Um, so I was not able to be at the original meeting, and I'm encouraged to hear um, the responses that you received. I'm not surprised because I uh, took it upon myself to do my own door-to-door -door survey uh, and I think what I'd like to do is just read you the email that I sent which you probably haven't received because it was right before the meeting um, and then just um, uh, emphasize a few points. Okay. Um, 
So, I said thank you for your recent survey regarding the proposed sidewalks on Hawks Avenue. It would have been preferable to have been notified prior to the meeting, however, better late than not at all. Subsequent to your letter, I have spoken with most of my Hawks Avenue neighbors about the questions raised. I have learned that while opinion is divided regarding the installation of sidewalks, we have a strong consensus that the real problems are, one, speeding, two, heavy truck traffic, and three, lack of enforcement. And I'm happy to hear, I'm going off book here, that you um, are taking all of those into consideration. All right, back to my script. All agree that making our street one way, east to west, would be a great solution. With traffic flowing in only one direction, there would be no need to move utility poles or to remove trees. There would be space for a clearly designated shoulder for walking. Obviously, it would also be much less expensive. The suggestion of closing off the Bank Street end and creating a little park or cul-de-sac is an even more elegant solution and also something that could be implemented immediately and with almost no cost. Again, the underlying problem about which I and my neighbors have voiced concerns for many years is the lack of enforcement of the posted speed and weight limits. The expense of designating a trooper to patrol would be far less than the proposed construction project. Finally, while I support the desire of my Grandview neighbors to have sidewalks on their street, we on Hawks should not be forced to do the same. Our situations are very different. The Grandview sidewalk could easily tie into the existing sidewalk on Main Street to um, address the point that was just raised. I oppose any sidewalks on Hawks Avenue, and I'm glad to hear that most of my neighbors do as well. I hope that you will take steps in the very near future to implement the common sense strategies that my neighbors and I have suggested to address the dangerous speeding and truck situation. And so my final point, not in the email, is that this is a problem that has been an ongoing one for a long time. Many of us have commented, we've asked for help, we've called. Um, the troopers, we've called the Bennington PD, um, very little has been done. So speed tables is a great idea, but right away, one way or blocking off one end could solve our problem. And understandably, our problem is different from Grandview's problem. But if we don't have to wait for uh, a bond or for a grant or anything that this could happen right away and we, we really do request that you take action uh, right away thanks okay thank you for your comments is anybody else yes there's another hand up hi i'm i'm ann Pibel. i live i've lived on hawks avenue for 22 years and um, what Naomi is saying is something all of us on Hawks agree. We've um, called up a lot to ask for more signage or maybe a slow children sign or a solar sign that lets drivers know that they're speeding. <clears throat> but what happens is traffic races around from uh, White Creek Road and zooms right up our hill. And so this is just a speedway because, of course, it's a connector to um, North Bennington is a little bit of a shortcut. But we would really love the, um, the, the select board to consider what other kinds of projects might be available for the street. The street is really narrow. The concrete on the street is perennially crumbling because of truck traffic. We're a shortcut for a lot of truck traffic. And the street is simply not um, set up for that kind of thing. It's a very narrow, almost a dirt road sort of width of, um, of roadway. And we, we just need to consider a different solution. I actually think it would be really fabulous, too, and agree with everything you know we said, but to um, when we are thinking about how to use the state money that we, we could even turn Hawks Avenue into a kind of boulevard with more and more trees, especially if it was a one-way street. There would be room for the bike lane slash pedestrian lane and traffic running east to west 
it would be a great middle ground that could really beautify the town instead of only um, ameliorating com you know, issues with the increased coverage of cement and fewer green spaces. That's all I have to say. I forwarded to everyone on the, on the select board the email that's been going around this week too, so you'll know the range of all the ideas that this great street has come up with together. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And we have somebody else on Zoom, too. Uh, Darren, go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Darren Rondino. I live at 80 Hawks Avenue. I purchased the home approximately three years ago. I was at the meeting, uh, the last meeting that was had. My question or, or thing that I'd like to ask about at the moment is, I, I, first, I'd like to express my appreciation for your attention to the issue. I also noticed that we did get the, the speed limit sign on One Direction here reposted. That's wonderful. It seems that, that what, from what I've noticed is there's no weight limit restriction signage on Hawks Avenue at either end. There, there was as recently as six months ago on the, on the um, east end, there's been a long-standing for years weight limit um, sign. And my understanding is that the select board just doesn't choose to enforce it. But from what, I, from what I've seen is that there's a weight limit sign restricting weight limit as you would go up Grandview, but at either end of Hawks Avenue, there doesn't seem to be a specific weight limit restriction sign for this section of roadway. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering if, if in order to conduct enforcement that we need to have proper posted weight limits on these signs, or I'm unclear as to... There, there was a sign for many years until very recently. It seems to have disappeared. Yes, I know there is. I know for a fact there is huh? no signage at either end of Hawks, of Hawks Avenue designated there was, a weight limit. There was one, wasn't there? Yeah, they're gone now. Oh, they're gone. Okay. The, there was one the entire time we lived here, and again, I'm saying within six months of the today's date, it's been removed. Well, those, those signs. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, those. Those signs are not put there by the town. The town has no jurisdiction over weight limits. Uh, that's all controlled by the state, and so the state would have to enforce that with uh, DOT trucks that have the scales and all that sort of stuff. That is not a town responsibility. We but, but traffic safety is the town responsibility, yes? And we can agree that the trucks go fast and are dangerous. So whether or not there is a posted sign put there by the state, oh. we'd like to see the trucks rerouted or slowed down one way or another. OK. Uh, the, the, I'm sorry to interrupt. The reason I brought up the lack of posting at either end is I'm a, I, I appreciate you informing me on how it's enforced and which entity would, would be required to enforce it. My thought process behind it was it would at least make it obvious at both ends what the late weight restriction is. And if we had a large pattern of large trucks that were obviously over that weight, we could begin to just document that via photographs or whatever in order to, you know, try to expedite the process of, of you know, minimizing by possibly approaching the business owners themselves. And, letting them know that you know their trucks are using this route and it's over the way limit of their particular vehicles. Okay. But without uh, any posting at either end of the street, it's not it's not even blatantly obvious to these guys as they come up and come through that they're not supposed to be on the street. Okay. We had um, um, a, a select board meeting or two recently in which we discussed the weight limits. And we can go, all of us can go back and look at those recordings. Um, what we learned in the meeting is that the road does have a truck weight limit, but that the select board in Shaftesbury votes to override it every time it comes up. Is that not the case? No, that's not, that's not true. That okay, so I, I misunderstood that. There... There is a time during the year called mud season when the town can opt to post certain dirt roads that have a problem with mud and that sort of stuff. Sure. The, the town has, town crew has done such a good job that we do not have mud 
problems anymore. So we do not opt to, but that is only a very specific time during the year when the, t when the town has any jurisdiction over town weight limits, okay? Or over road, road weight limits. Again, your street is controlled by the state. The state puts up the signs, the state takes down the signs, the state enforces it. It's not a town thing. So we, would, we would just need to call the state to ask for our sign to be replaced? Yes, as far as okay. I know. Okay. Okay? Uh, and, and did you hear us speak earlier that uh, we probably will be doing another traffic survey? That's amazing. And also, I dare remind me to preface everything with thanking you all so much for um, serving on the slip board. That's, we're, so, we're so glad. But um, yeah, I would, I would it's, it's admirable. I'm super excited. I'm a little bit of a cynical optimist because I have called so many times and tried hard. I hope that this state police will, will work with you at your request. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Everybody, okay? So. So I'm gonna be forwarding the results over to uh, Dufresne Engineering uh, just to kind of wrap up the presentation to the state. Uh, and then we'll all be back here discussing where to go. We have to wrap up this part of it. <coughs> Uh, and see what the recommendations are uh, and see where we're going to go. Uh, the survey was very informative. Uh, clearly, you know, you know, we know the results of that. And we'll see what options we have by dropping hawks, hawks off, uh, whether that little sidewalk meets the connectivity thing because they're really looking for loops and things. Uh, but that will all be determined from here. Okay. So, oh, Would you share with, the, with us the latest the last time that we did a survey on Grandview Street. Yeah, what, the last what, one on Grandview, uh, give me a minute to pull that up. This is done by the box that sets and catches <coughs> vehicle size, speed, all that sort of stuff. Oops. Sorry. Can I just jump in with a quick question? Yes. Um, I'm just wondering where the board stands uh, on the speed table question for Hawks, given the results of your survey. What? Well, I guess go go around and we'll ask each one. I I, I don't know. If, I guess we can comment. Uh, Tony? I agree. I mean, I think Hawks Avenue has really been a problem. And unfortunately, enforcement is the biggest issue, I think, that we face. Um, and I'm worried, of, I'm worried that trucks use it as a shortcut through to uh, White Creek Road. Uh, I, you know, I, I myself have seen it often. Um, and I'm worried. I'm really worried, and I agree. Um, but I don't think we can cut that road off uh, and turn it into a cul-de-sac. So that's a connector. Connector, yeah. But the what about the speed table question specifically? I'm not sure. I'm I'm not sure whether that would work or not. If I can still point out just for a second here too, we still need an engineering report. Right. On the speed table, the feasibility, where it can be located, it's width, where it would be placed by street light. So there's still a lot of questions about the speed table. It's part of this study, the overall study for both streets, but we don't have a complete data on it yet either, yeah. just to point that out. So. Mm -hmm. Mike? So, yeah, I don't oppose the speed table, assuming it meets all the criteria that Dave just laid out, but I'm not philosophically opposed to it. I've lived in areas with them, they do work, so... Uh, there's issues with snow plows and this and that, but uh, in theory, I like it. Yeah, I mean. yeah, and I am a little confused by and would like to hear eventually um, what drives the um, desire not to have speed tables on Oaks Avenue. 
my experience with them has been that they are very effective. They are a little loud, but the trucks are very loud. So yeah. the, the, the loudness of those trucks speeding seems to me to be a big, a big issue. But I, I also just sort of feel like this should be guided by, the, by what the people on the block want. Um, yeah. And in terms of um, making it a one-way, I would love to hear what people on Hawks Avenue think um, about what would then, what the traffic pattern would then be, and how that would alter things, and um, how that alteration would be managed. I'm not saying it couldn't be. I, I would love to hear people's thoughts at some point on that from Hawks Avenue. I'm going to ask Mike uh, Iannotti, who is our road foreman, if he's had any experiences with snow plows and speed tables. Mike, come up to the table. Can't sit back there. Come up to the table. Personally, no, I haven't had any experience with them. I've talked to a few different towns that have had them, and they haven't had any good luck, luck with they had good luck with them for slowing people down, but as a maintenance st standpoint, they're hard to take care of. And the reason they're hard to take care of is because of our freeze and thaw in the winter time. Is it's hard to get the pavement to bond. You know, you got this bump in the road, and then the plow comes down, the salt gets underneath it, and everything. Mm -hmm. So they they deteriorate really fast. So they, from what I was told, is they can be costly. To, and, to maintain. And they're expensive to begin with. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And they're not really, I mean, there isn't a lot around this area because, because of, of the, the winter time and the conditions and everything. Okay. But that's, no, I've never really experienced anything with them. But. It's all things we have to consider. So when you do, um, there's also evidently a device, and I don't know what it's called, but it's with the same purpose of slowing traffic. Um, and rather than by being a raised bump or table, it's actually like a little ditch. Somebody said they have them in Manchester, I don't know. And the, I guess the idea behind that is that the vehicles still have to slow down, um, but the plows don't have to raise their blades. Okay. Did you find? Did you find that survey for Grandview? Yeah. Okay. I have to bring it back up. Do you think it would be possible when you speak with the engineers to actually um, do the same thing that you you know you asked for a proposal about sidewalks? Could we ask for a proposal about the one-way street plus pedestrian slash bike lane? Hmm. Not. It seems like we could, if we were able to ask for sidewalk um, research. Why not ask for some research about other alternatives that the residents of the street are more interested in? The, this grant uh, doesn't cover any of that. They can't work on anything outside of the grant. Uh, because it's, it's only the sidewalk? Grant? Yeah, it's a federal program to... Uh, what, well, you know, actually the idea was to connect a sidewalk, to use part of the current roadway as a sidewalk. Yeah, so that I doesn't... No that... matter of how you describe what a sidewalk is, why not make the road one-way road with a sidewalk and then put the curbs in that sounds like a project that would probably be um, under the umbrella of the grant well i'll mention it to the engineers but i believe that will be out of the scope really of this great. grant just to know that someone was willing to ask or like check with the engineers about what they might or even to hire a designer instead of just an engineer what someone it's, that actually yeah. you you got to remember you got to remember just moving forward. Okay. Uh, yeah. But I think is if we can, we weren't asked what we wanted the research to be. I think what we're saying is we would love to have information gathering about the feasibility and cost of installing a one-way road with a sidewalk. Right. It's still the sidewalk. Doesn't change the grant. It just changed changes the access to the road and it changes the way that trucks will behave. So we'll have half as many trucks and there is another way around. And um, I think that the character of the street aesthetically would automatically 
reduce the psychological so, impulse to speed through the street. Okay. Because it would be narrower. Yes, we but hear I, you. I'm asking for you to actually consider it and actually ask the engineers to consider it too. This, this is all the state decisions. This is not a town decision, okay? This, this is a state road. This is a connector. I don't need that to be explained to me. Okay. I understand all of that. All I'm asking is the research that has already been established in relationship to the sidewalks could just be shifted um, to accommodate the wishes of the we will We will review the wording of the grant and see if there's any leeway to include things that aren't specifically laid out in the wording of the grant. That's about the best we can do. But it doesn't mean we're not listening to the rest of what you're saying because the other alternatives you've mentioned have to be looked at from a different angle because there's a lot more things and different things to consider when you talk about closing off a road or changing it one way. There's uh, many other things and many other residents in neighboring towns that have to be taken into consideration. But uh, I think we're hearing all that. It just this is one angle that we've signed a contract with an engineer to develop certain things to meet the federal guidelines for this grant. So we'll pick up the other stuff and keep looking at it. Okay. I would just want to emphasize that all of us are, you know, longtime residents and we're all intelligent and we understand what engineers and designers do. And I think that if there is any, um, if there are any questions or things you need to explain to us about what the other variables are that are separate from the residents of the street, whether they have to do with local businesses or neighboring towns, that that all of that becomes much more transparent. I would appreciate that. Sure. Okay. I, you know, and this is things we will definitely be getting to. Okay. okay so do you want to bring that up? Uh, if I have to find it again. Hold on a second. Someday I'll get quicker at this. Okay. So this was a, we just, uh, Art asked to see this again. This was a speed analysis that was done on Grandview back last year, the year before actually now, over a seven day period. Uh, and this is what the one that's being conducted on Hawks will look like also. And it showed 1,782 cars during that period going in either direction on Grandview. Uh, the speed limit was set at 35. The average speed during that entire seven day period was 25 miles an hour. There was a total of, out of these 1,762 cars, there were 72 enforceable violations, which was 4% of the total vehicles on the road. Uh, the highest speed recorded was 50 and the lowest was 7. So this is what, what it will also look like on, on Grant and there's lots more data that goes along with this, but this is the synopsis. So this was good for Grandview to clearly demonstrate, because most, most uh, speed limits are set this way. The drivers are, have decided behind the wheel that the safest speed to drive is 25 uh, here. So lowering the speed limit is, is a great advantage here, and it makes enforcing uh, for the higher speeds much easier. But it it's kind of also shows most of the time the speed is slower than what people actually perceive it to be. And when we get the Hawks at, uh, information in, which could be two to three weeks, we will definitely share that with everyone. Right. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Anybody on the board comments or questions or anything? Okay. Thank you. We appreciate all your concerns. And uh, this goes to the engineer. We will talk about some of the things that you've asked about. Okay. Okay, uh, Mike is here for... Thank you. You're welcome. Department of Public Works, Michael. Yep. <laughs> um, two things on the agenda. Uh, we'll be putting Buck Hill paving out to bed. Okay. I sent the documents over to Dave this afternoon. I don't know if he got them or not, but... Uh, I didn't have time to distribute just, them. Yep. Um, yeah, I was a little behind on that one, but that's going to be um, 
we're going to shim that road and overlay it. And that is a VTRANS Class 2 roadway paving grant that we received a couple of years back. And what, what is our share? Is our, our it's, uh, yeah. I have it right here. Yeah. <laughs> I think I do. <laughs> I have it in the office. The total amount is 153,400. So, so 20% of that. 30,000. 30,000. Okay. By the time we're done, it usually runs us about 40,000 with the little things we add on as we go and along. I would say that this number was, and actually, well, looking at the estimate, it's actually the estimate is a good, is a good number, but. I would say this number was submitted in 2021. I would say listening with Dave, another 10, 15,000 over is probably going to yeah. be about where it's yeah. going to be because that road is so out of shape. It's there's going to be. It's gotten be, worse. It's gotten worse. Yep. Yeah. And there's um, some spots that have some really deep wheel ruts that we're going to have to, that's why we're going to have to shim it and then overlay it. Because if we just go with an overlay, uh, two inches we're going to be six inches in some spots and it's not going to compact good and yep. just so talking with um peckham and stuff to shim it reshape the road then put a surface overlay on it so that's the way i got it up, out to bid and i'll submit it to peckham and he distributed it to, to a different couple different pavers okay um Culverts. The culverts are going to be done by the town crew. There's seven of them that we have to do. And I've been kind of just dragging my feet on that because of the school. Because we're going to, you know, to replace the culvert. You have to shut down the road. I'm, I'm not going to shut down the road. I spoke with a contractor about borrowing one of his road plates. But it's so, yeah. so busy in early morning and late afternoon that... If I, you wait till eight o'clock to start. Now we're running into the busy time in the in the yep. later in the day. So I'm just kind of waiting for school to wind down. But we'll go right up through and replace those culverts and then repave them ourselves. Those the, the sections where we put the culverts in, and um, then uh, once we're all done, the pavement company that's awarded the bid can do their thing. That'll happen this year. That'll happen this year. And the way I wrote it up in here is that uh, they need to, it needs to be paid by September 1st when the school is not going on, just to make life a lot easier okay. up through there. And I don't see, we're putting it out to bid now, what are we, mid-May? I don't see why that's a problem for someone to get on their schedule for a two-day, two, three-day paving project. So, okay. Um, and then we will be, um, the town crew will be cleaning all the ditches up through there starting next week we're going to start doing ditching because that's you know we're only on one side of the road and once school traffic is done it's pretty quiet up through there okay. for the most part so um, we're going to get a lot of that out of the way starting next week uh, the other project that's on the agenda was trumbull hill that is a um, grant and aid um we received a grant for that like not too long ago yeah like I think it just got awarded last week. It wasn't week even or, too long ago. Yeah, that yeah, got awarded, yeah. Which, but I picked that section because when Fitzgerald's, um, Evans Fitzgerald came around, I think it was like the 2019, they did that MRGP road inventory, erosion inventory, and they mapped out um, a nice little project right there. And with, where that is, is it's, um, you got Oak Hill, on Tr Trumbull Hill, you got Oak Hill Road. So from Oak Hill all the way up to just about the top of the road, and it is a replacement of four culverts, one driveway culvert, and like a thousand feet of stone line ditching. And then um, the culvert underneath, when they looked at it, when Evan Fitzgerald did their, they just said to clean out the culvert under Oak Hill. Well, it's there's no cleaning out. It's time to replace it. So I added that in there to replace it. Okay. So we'll put that out to bid and have a contractor do that. And that's another, I don't remember the numbers on that one. Well, frankly, I don't, I don't have them in either. I, that one but I it's another have. small match. That on one's our small. Yeah, grand aids are like usually 10%. So. I want to say, yeah, I don't even remember. It might so be $6,000. Town, yeah. town crew do this or are no, you putting this out to bid? No, we're putting this out to bid, out to bid too. Okay. 
Um, we got way too much to do on yep. um, right. Buck Hill. Yep. I'd rather bid this one out. Good. Yep. Um, a little project that we are going to do is before Buck Hill on LeClaire Road, there is a box culvert. I'm trying to think, there's a couple of them, but just before you go up the steep hill, yeah, I can't. I'm trying to think of good. There's um coming in from Bennett. So if you're coming from Bennett Hill and you go down the yep. winding curve, and then just as you start to go up that steep hill, there's a field, farmer's field. Yeah. Well, when we got that July flood a couple years ago, quite a few years ago, took most of that that little brook took most of that field out. Well, the farmer cleaned it all up. Well, yeah. I was out looking at some culverts with the state, and that box culvert is completely full. Wow. And it was in, it, that culvert was installed in 2008, so it shouldn't be shouldn't be full. So speaking with the river engineer, he's going to let me pull all the baffles, so that it's got fish baffles in it, but it's not it's not a fish stream. It's more of a runoff stream. It is, yeah. 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 So we're going to pull out all the baffles. And, and he wants us to try to make sure that that'll help flush itself out. Because it's you can still get in there. We're going to start with the first one, and then we're going to work back and then get the next one. And he, he found a set of um, plans back from 2008 that there's four baffles in there. So, And then we have to do some. The, the river decided to change course, so he's letting us straighten that out and rebuild the bank so it stop eroding. And there's a similar problem on Bennett Hill across from Bishop's. The stream has eroded the road, and I got a permit to do a temporary fix there because if you notice, it's starting to wash the road out. Yep. It hasn't come to the road, but it's real dry right now. But if we get some good flooding, it probably will take some of that. So I just got all the permits, and he staked everything out. So we're going to. We're going to get that done while everything's dry. Okay. Um, we've been going around doing all the speed limit signs for the change. Um, I got Hawks and Grandview and some of the new the new roads that were 35. We we um, did all those ones first. So Myers Road from 7A to Eric Road that's posted. 25, Old Depot from the railroad tracks to Arlington Line 25, Maple Hill from Old Depot all the way to Cider Mill, and then all the way to East Road intersection, that's all marked 25. And the little, and Cold Spring is done. Um, and then the section in the hollow. I do not have any more sign, any more 25s. <coughs> and, and I, and I like, Maple Hill is marked, but we should put at least two more on that one. It's a long stretch, but I wanted to get the, you know, when you pull off the intersections, you can see that it's 25 miles an hour. So I'm going to have to uh, buy some more. Okay. <laughs> and post. I can wait, or we can keep going with that. No, you keep going. Okay, keep I just going. wanted to make sure. Um, so... That'll happen again too, pretty soon. Today, the guys did quite a bit of signage too. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, to add one more thing to the list, the roadside mower is going to start possibly tomorrow. I thought you were going to say the roadside oh, wow. mower is broken. No, yeah, that's not. what I was hearing too. <laughs> but I'm gonna, we're going to get behind if we don't start now. Absolutely. So we're, we're going out. Well, I was actually going to have Tim out today, but Norm called me from. Uh, North Bennington and asked if we wanted some millings. They're milling over there, so I sent two trucks over there, and we got quite a bit of uh, asphalt millings that we can use somewhere. So I wanted to take advantage of that. But, um, but do you have to? Do you mix something with that? So uh, Ron, the millings. Ron was talking to the foreman over there, and he said to mix it with your gravel. And it won't. If you put, if I put it down straight, yeah, the grader's going to come 
come up through and it because it gets so hard it's going to chunk up and you're not going to be able to grade it so okay. they said to mix it with the gravel and it'll work really well so I'm going to we're going to try it on a section of the road we just I told the guys come up with some ideas pick a spot you want to, you know it's not like we have a, a lot but we got enough to probably do a thousand feet somewhere okay. that needs gravel or something so there's Ron and Dave are thinking about where they want, you know, they grade the roads, so yep. they would know where it needs it. Okay. Um, so we'll see what, where they decide, and then I'll, I'll let you know and okay. see what happens. Sounds good. Um, I think that's all I pretty much have for now. Okay. There's always something going on. Yeah. So so these bids go out, and then when do we open? When do June, we the first meeting in June is Fifth. when... Will, it was it the fifth? Yes. Yeah, that's when we'll open the bids. They got to be back by June fifth. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Actually, they have to be well, back by. I think we picked uh, Thursday the first. Thursday the yeah. The Thursday the first, they will be delivered to Cole Hall to the town administrator, and then they will be open by the select board on fifth at the meeting. Okay. Yep. Very good. Okay. Questions? Any other for questions them? or anything? Nope. Thank you, Mike. Thank Ver you. Very good. Thanks. You're, you're staying around for. Okay. Oh. So, because the scales were broken and we didn't know if we should buy new scales or have them certified every year and that sort of stuff, Dave has been working on. Yeah. We actually got the scale to work again. Okay. <laughs> it's amazing what a swift kick will do. And, you know, apparently, well, of all things, rocks got caught underneath the plate. Wow. So there was a moment of frustration by a certain employee, and boom, it came back to work. Uh, but, but we still face every year an annual $500 bill to uh, have them come and put a little sticker on it right. for five minutes' work. But it's required by the Ag Department. So, Palinol, Bennington, and most towns have moved to just a plain per bag fee. And that would make our auditors very happy because then we can just charge and keep records of how many bags are thrown. Uh, it works out for Bennington weight-wise, Palinol weight-wise, the Casella facility in Sunderland. Uh, so we're like one of the last that still has a scale. And it's actually would turn out to be more accurate because it's a 13-gallon bag, it's $3. It's a 24-gallon bag, it's $4. Because right now you can get a lot of the um, near the scale, you know, the proximity call, but it's 12 pounds, so it's two dollars, and we just need to. Uh, this will actually be more accurate, and in the long run, no other town has had a problem doing it per bag compared to weighing individually. So these prices are an increase from what we're doing now, but as I said at the last meeting, we have a significant loss running the transfer station. We have 360 some odd patrons and uh, 1,600 some odd residences. So it's a small percentage of the town that uses it. We, it's not covering its own costs, so we have to up it a little bit. So this will bring it comparable to Palinol and Bennington. So it's, it's not really a, a large increase. One of the complaints that they hear all the time is, you know, we have taxpayers and we're paying for this. It's like, well, no, all the taxpayers are paying for this. and we're just asking the consumers of this service to help defray the cost because everyone in town who's paying taxes is paying to keep the transfer station running. So these are real minimal increases. Uh, actually, it's only in the 12-pound bag area that's really significant. It's a $1 increase. Um, the 24 pounds we charge $4 for, the 30-gallon bag we're going to charge $4 for, and it actually gets, gets a little bit less as you move up. And the 48 pounds is equal to a 55 gallon bag and that's the same price as it was now. We could get into the 50 cent thing like two, but that is a operational nightmare having to make change and the amount of excuses. We're not changing most everything else. What we are doing is going down the list a little further. Uh, we used to charge a little bit more when you dropped off an appliance that had Freon in it under the new arrangement with Casella. Uh, they have a Freon uh, capture program where they come and drain these things, which is turning out to be uh, much cheaper than the way we were doing it before. So 
we're dropping the difference with without Freon or with Freon. It's all going to be the same now. But the, uh, that was a one of the concerns was that the brush thing. So I, I noticed there's no no charge for yard waste anymore. Uh, or no change, or is it still the? There's no change. For oh, no yard change. Waste. Okay. Okay. Let me get that. Mike way. wants to. Tires. Tires are being changed to uh, garden tractors will be three dollars. Cars and light trucks are six dollars, and there's no truck tires at all. You know, medium to heavy duty trucks, and no tractor tires. Uh, they're very difficult to deal with, and. Uh, if you're getting your truck tires replaced or your tractor tires replaced, turn your track tires in to the person you're buying from. And that's all we're doing. If I, I, I wish I could say I don't understand how you wind up with spare tires because I have five or six in my garage too that uh, you know, I'm going to wind up taking down to the transfer station and spending them, or the dealer and paying yeah, the money. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, you know, you have a few teenagers with cars and suddenly you have tires hanging around. So. Uh, but we have to charge more because, uh, you know, we're, right now we bring them down to bank and tire and the town pays for it. So you, we're just going to have to pay right up front for it. And uh, like I said, we got one giant tire dropped off. It's like, we can't do this. $100. Yeah. Well, we're not going to take them at all. No, I'm saying that tire was Yeah, $100 to get rid of the one tire, you know, that they shouldn't have taken. But, you know, they did, and I appreciate sometimes they have a difficult time up there. But, uh, you know, I, yeah, the guy doesn't want to drop the tire off where it should go because he doesn't want to pay $100, so we get stuck with it. Uh, and nothing else has really changed on here. We haven't taken C&D, construction and demolition debris, for quite some time uh, because that all can go to the Kissella Way Scales and Sunderland or Bennington. Uh, E-waste has been going to Bennington for forever. Uh, batteries and all kinds of things uh, all go to Bennington right now, and the group we belong to is constructing a hazardous waste facility at the bank and transfer station that will be open year round. There will be no more you know, spring and fall uh, collection days. There will be appointments you can set up and just bring down at any time. So that will be very convenient to take care of a lot of these things. Like I said, the main one is simply going from weighing your individual trash bags to you have a 13 pound bag, it's $3. And we want to start this July 1st uh, to just start the fiscal year. We'll just run this year out. And uh, that will give us time to make up a sign that explains the new rates. And July 1st, this is what it's going to be. So. I think it would be helpful if you took a 13-gallon bag and filled it up full of newspapers and set it there so that everybody knows yeah, what a 13 yeah. and a 20. Well, yeah, because some of these, uh, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Just fill up a 13-gallon bag with something. It's your standard kitchen bag, but uh, it's amazing how you can balloon those up sometimes, too. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, everybody uses this, so I, I don't see any variation. We're doing very well on the Casella contract, uh, so, you know, I, I, it's just keeping it going. This will go on the web, web page? Or, or well, it's not until it's approved, and then when we change the whole thing, I'll, I'll put it up and uh, so, we'll make signs. So, um, looking for approval now or later, or you want to uh, uh, want to the public? Yeah, if you want to wait tonight, uh, this is kind of the public announcement of this, I'll get something uh, corralled on the front page of the web page and posted. We can get public feedback okay. and uh, take up a vote from there. I have a yeah. question about something you said at the beginning. It's been puzzling me. Um, you said there are only 300 residences that participate. Correct. A little over 300. Does And how do you measure that? Is that by people who have purchased access yes. permits? Because a lot of people, there's, how do we know? Well, nobody has checked my access permit. In is it years. in your window? No. I've changed cars and, you know. Is it's not in your window? Well, no, they, they know you window. too. It's in my but, glove compartment. Well, there's, there's two aspects to this. Shelly and Greggy have been there for right. ages. And they kind of know who buys because they get the list. So, I mean, they've known you. So they see you come in. 
and I think that's pretty much how they do it. But I have spoken to them about uh, needing to ramp this up. But the maximum, the maximum we ever sold was 400 and, and like 60. So that still leaves more than a thousand households not using the transfer station. We're using it and not paying the access fee. That's that would that would reflect oddly in the tonnage we pay for. Uh, if there okay. was that many more people okay. using it, and I'm not saying there aren't some, I know that they have conflicts with some people who argue with this is how this started actually, people arguing about this stuff, but uh, I have spoken to both of them about this. When the pandemic started and we stopped collecting in per, you know, put it in the mailbox, it actually increased the revenues. We got, we got a, a boost of, of, you know, I'll pay for everything. When we moved away from the pandemic, it started shrinking a lot, and so did the access permits. So I uh, say, so, you know, you two, you know, you're now, Greg now works for the town. She now has more responsibility than she did when she was the only town employee. It's like you have to watch, and you have, part of your job is, you know, you have to tell people that they can't just drive in and drop garbage. You know, and, and people try and do this everywhere. I was at a certain gas station today, pumping my gas when a car with out-of-state plates came in, took out a giant bag of garbage, stuffed it in the can by the pumps, pumped like a <laughs> dollar of gas and drove away. And I was just like, yeah. okay. Uh, you know, but, you know, it is something that would be, if it was very skewed between the access permits, the tonnage would, would kind of reflect it. Okay. The tonnage... Uh, is how I really judge how much we're collecting. And, and the money stays close to the tonnage. When it started drifting after the pandemic, because it, the revenue started going down when the tonnage wasn't, you know, it was amazing. We got really close at the beginning of the pandemic when we weren't even collecting. We used to sell these silly little stickers to put mm -hmm. on the bags. It got really close without selling the stickers. But towards the end of the pandemic, it started drifting apart again. So. It was like, you know, you got to make sure people are doing this correctly. Okay. But it's still close. It's still Thank close. you for that explanation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be posted. Uh, yeah, I'm going to post the, the proposal, uh, and we'll look for feedback at the next couple of meetings and see what people think. Uh, but we'll we got from there. We start, we got to make a decision before July 1st. Yeah, I would say the first meeting, well, we have till June 5th, maybe, uh, the first meeting in June, because then I, with that, we can get a sign made up down the street here relatively quickly. I'll have it designed already. Okay. And just get it posted so people can see it. And Very good. We'll move on. All right. Comments? Anything? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, the cemetery com committee has a vacancy, and there is a volunteer uh, to fill that vacancy, and it's Rosemary Lindsay. I don't. Good. Everybody knows Rosemary, and yeah. that's so. Uh, probably take a vote. Is it best to? Yeah, take a vote in, uh, to appoint her to the cemetery uh, committee. Uh, entertain a motion to appoint Rosemary Lindsay to the vacancy on the cemetery committee. So moved. Tony. Moved by Tony. Second. Second by Naomi. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Four zero zero. Thank you, Rosemary. She is she's yeah. a she's a go getter. Yeah. Absolutely. Other business. Uh, we have the uh, a notice to intervene form for the uh, PUC on the solar project. I understand that the Planning Commission filled this out. Well, actually, the Planning Commission chair was unable to fill it out. I was in a sort of um, uh, um, loop. A um. loop. The uh, you had to fill it out in the EPUC website, but when you went to that, yeah. the form wasn't there, and the form is there on the non digital website but but it's not there on the website you have to fill it out on I'm the so I was EPUC talk to administrator so maybe let me look at it tomorrow maybe I can okay. find one for both I'll talk to you about it okay great because you can only have one 
point of contact, and I've been on it a lot since this started. So let me, let me see. Maybe I can just open it up and just fill them out for both. Okay, great. Because it is just just for everybody in the audience. This is just saying the planning commission and the select board are registering as intervener. We're not making any statement or anything. It's just when the time comes, we're already listed. They recommend that if you want to be an intervener, you do it early in the process. And this is what the, pretty much came out in the towns when we had town our town yep. meeting that they yep. said they wanted us to right. be at the table. So mm -hmm. we. Yep. So you will. You think you can? Yeah, let for me both have that back, us? and I'll, I'll look at it tomorrow. I'll talk to you, Naomi. I think I can. Uh, Okay. If I can, I'll just register okay, both. Okay, that sounds good. Both for it, yeah. Thank okay. You. Uh, Let's thank the people who participated in Green Up. They oh, goodness. Yeah. Yes. yes. Incredible job. You, you still got some, some bags to pick up on some of the roads? I, there are green bags. I think they just got the last two that appeared... There was some on Rowland Road and some on Holter Road. Yes, there were I'm some. I'm sure they got them this afternoon. Okay. Yep. Along with the ten bicycles. Uh, wow. Ten bicycles. Over the bank, right where they're, Nick and Eric were installing a 25 mile an hour sign just above your house. Somebody backed up a trailer and dumped. Yeah. Did you see that? I didn't see it happen, but I saw the results. Oh, you yeah. did. Yeah, that's all cleaned up. That's great. It's every green up day. Somebody dumped something somewhere. <laughs> they did a good job. Oh, you remember the year we had uh, the computer parts routinely showing up all along on your side of town, Art? And somebody was emptying some building and just driving down in the middle of the night and throwing parts out in the road, and we were continually picking them up. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe yep. we want to just um, announce, I should have said this during announcements, but to draw people's attention to the fact that the um, town has a lot of free COVID tests to give away. Oh, okay. And you just that. have to uh, contact Marlene. Yep. Lots of them and more wow. to come. Lots. So uh, lots people should come and take as many yep. as they want. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They're beginning to charge for them. I mean, yeah. The, the, and we literally have hundreds. Okay. Because we just asked and they just kept sending. So. <laughs> okay. Good. Good to know. Thank you. Uh, okay. Review of action items. Well, I'll do the intervener for yep. both committees. Uh, I'll post on the web page the notice for the no parking zone on 7A. We will talk with our engineers regarding the results of the survey and other suggestions with that on uh, Grandview and Hawks. Uh, post Bill Camarda's Bennington Rescue's announcement for the training next week. He already sent it to me. Okay. Uh, and we'll work on the uh, something for the web page for the pay it change. I think that's... It's quite a bit. Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, and we're going to put it out to bids. Oh, yes. The the bids got to go out too. Yes. <laughs> okay. The bids. Okay. Before we adjourn, we'd like to go enter into executive session for personnel issues. Could we ask our cam cameraman to step outside and shut the camera off? <laughs> and just for everyone on Zoom, we're going to pause this meeting, we're going to lock it out. Uh, because it's an executive session, so I'll have to uh, lock everyone out. Okay, we're back in open meeting. We left executive session. Uh, would entertain a motion that the town hire Cody Wilkins as a new, uh, he'll start in as a summer uh, is it internship or, or the summer? Summer uh, parks and buildings uh, maintenance employee. And then we'll graduate in September to full time as a uh, DPW, DPW worker. Yeah. Okay. Right, so moved. That's a move by Mike. Second. Second by Naomi. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. 
four zero zero. Any other business to come before us? Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Mike. Second. <laughs> Second by <laughs> Tony. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Thank you for your time. Very much.